Good evening. It's good to see each one of you with us tonight and appreciate you joining with us on June the 1st, 2020. Um, it's hard to believe it's already June the 1st, uh, but we uh, appreciate your joining with us tonight and uh, sharing this time together uh, with us. Um, we're we welcome you together. Uh, let me go ahead and remind you that you don't want to miss this coming Sunday uh, at Infusion Church as we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Come and join with us as we celebrate Jesus. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to seeing each of you there on Sunday. If you can't be with us, please be sure and join with us on Facebook Live. Uh, we're joining with you from my study tonight at home, and uh, uh, Denisa is not with us. We have uh, uh, five grandsons with us tonight, and uh, she's taken them out for a little while just to occupy them so that uh, we can share this time together, and uh, uh, I, they, they all wanted to be a part of... Uh, um, uh, of this live feed so we thought it best to do it this way so this is the way we're going to do it and yes it is hot sure is hot ain't it and uh, I know summer is upon us and I'm not complaining uh, even though uh, it's a little too hot for me for just the first day of June hope this is not a warning of what is ahead of us uh, of course, I'm sure there will be plenty of hot days to come. Uh, so enjoy it and uh, uh, catch your breath the best way you can and stay as cool as you can. And I'm supposed to cool off starting Friday uh, and uh, be comfortable for the weekend. So come and join with us Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, and let's celebrate Pentecost Sunday together this coming Sunday. We have been looking at the armor of God over these last number of weeks. I've told you the whole time that that I want you to look at it a little bit different rather than something to put on, rather than it's something we wear. That it's he's talking about relationship. Uh, each facet of this armor is 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 about making our relationship what it should be to the fullest extent that it should be and can be. And so uh, we appreciate uh, all of you who've joined with us each week. And uh, tonight, I just want to remind you that what we're looking at is found in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, beginning verse 13. He says, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. That is so important. Verses 14 to 19 says, Stand therefore, having your waist girded with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation, and we talked about that helmet of salvation last week. And this week we talk about, and he says, take the helmet of salvation, verse 17, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit is, is, is just exactly what it says. Uh, it's a mighty sword. We're going to look at that and what the scriptures tell us about that, but it is important that we understand that, that all of this is multifaceted. When you think about the, the sword of the Spirit, Hebrews chapter... Um, Four, verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful 
sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of all and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Wow. That's a powerful sword when you think about what he's telling us that the word of God is a living uh, organism. Uh, that word is not just supposed to be words that he spoke or words that we read on a page. And even if they are in red, that doesn't, it's, it's words. The, what makes it come alive is the spirit of God that applies it into our heart and into our life that we make it a personal word. We make it the rhema word. We make it God's word to us and his, his speaking to us and what he's wanting in us. And, and he, he, he says, is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, joints marrow, is a discerner of thoughts and the intent of the heart. You see, I am, I'm convinced by what the Bible tells us that God's not as concerned with what you do. Now, listen, listen to what I'm saying. Don't, don't go out and say, well, the pastor said, God don't care what you do. That's not what I said. God's not as concerned about what you do as why you do what you do. What's the motive? What's the intent of your heart? What, what's behind what you're doing? Because you see, you can have the right action, but the wrong motive and the wrong intent cancels out the action. It doesn't mean anything if it's done for the wrong thing. If you give, the Bible tells us, only to be seen of men, then that's your reward. That, that's it. There's nothing else. But if you give not letting your left hand know what your right hand is doing, if you do things in secret, the Lord rewards in open and what he's trying to get us to see is is that that this word is powerful so that it 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 gives to us the meaning of not just okay a b c d i didn't do this and i didn't do this i did this and i did this so i'm good to go what's your heart what's your heart speaking What's the intent? What's the motivation behind what you're doing? That, that is so important that we understand. And, and when I think of the two-edged sword, when I think that, that that sword goes in not only to cut, but it's also the, the heel. It, it is, it is the, 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 the rightly dividing so that it's not cutting away more than should be cut away, but it's also protecting what needs to be protecting. The New Living Translation translates those verses, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joints and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. You see, when we, when we, read God's word, when we take that word, when it becomes a part of us, it opens to us, look, <laughs> we got to deal with some of this stuff. We, you, you can't just read the book and not be moved to change your life. You can't allow that word to become a part of you and it has no intent and nothing, nothing changes inside of us. It is, it is a powerful thing. The message puts it this way. God means what he says, and what he says goes. His powerful word is sharp as a surgeon's scalpel, cutting through everything, whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey. You see, God's word cuts through all the junk, all the clutter, all the stuff, all the fluff. And here it is. Here's the truth. Here's the truth. It is so important that God's that we understand God's word. You see, 
there's a lot of people who spout God's word that uh, their intent is to hurt and to destroy and to tear down. And, to, and you see, God's word comes with a purpose of conviction, not condemnation. He didn't come to condemn us. He came to save us. And when somebody's piling condemnation on you, that's not God. The devil's real good about condemning. The, rev the devil's real good about pointing fingers and telling you you're the reason and you're the problem and all of this. The real reality is God convicts us because he's not just wanting uh, to point out our sin. He's wanting to change us. He's wanting to make us better than we were before. He's not telling us or revealing this to us to, to destroy us or to kill us. He's revealing this to us to heal us and to make us better. There is a distinct difference in the word that goes forth that, that listen, the Bible says that we're to always be sharing that word, but we're always to be sharing that word in love. That love has to permeate everything that we do. And if we allow condemnation to come through us, then we're not doing what God's called us to do. Now, now listen, I'm not talking about preaching against sin. I'm not telling people that it's wrong to do this or wrong to... That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is on a personal level, gee, show me one time Jesus did that. The harshest words that Jesus had to anybody in his earthly ministry was to the religious people who were always condemning, who were always finding fault and ready to stone people. That's the ones that Jesus had the harsh words to speak to. You that are without sin, you go ahead. You cast the first stone. You think you're better than everybody else? Put your money where your mouth is. It's so important that we understand God's word. And we under that's the value of getting in the word of God and reading it for ourselves and knowing what God says and knowing what he's expecting of us and not just taking somebody else's word for it. But we've read it. We see it. He's speaking into our hearts and into our lives. His spirit is touching in our soul. His, he's, he's dividing in us those rights and wrongs. And he's the potter, we're the clay. And he's removing those imperfections and those stones out of our lives so that we become a moldable lump of clay that he can mold and shape into a vessel of honor that he can use. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is a sharp sword. The word of God, and listen, there's coming a time when the word of God will come forth that will cause millions to die. But it's because they've already rejected the truth. And it's because they have turned their back on God. And now they're fighting against him. And he gives them their just reward. John says in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Who? Even from the very beginning, the Word of God produces. You see, I, I've always described it in this manner. This may not be the way you describe it, but this is the way I describe how God works. The Father is like the mind. He thinks it. The Son is the Word. He speaks it. The Spirit is the hands. He moves. Go back to the beginning of Genesis and read the book and look at what he says, that there wasn't anything, and then God said, and there was. And the Spirit moved upon, and the Spirit moved. 
God thinks it, the Spirit, the, the Son says it, the Spirit moves. It is, it's, it's the three, you, you can't divide them. They're one. They're one God. And people say, well, you're, you're worshiping three gods. No. I have a mind. I have a mouth. And I have hands. I'm one person. I speak. I think. I speak. And my hands do. I'm one person. It's, it's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He was with God in the beginning. He spoke it into existence. You know, when you go back and read that account in Genesis, you understand that we are uniquely and marvelously made in that God made us from the dust of the earth and breathed into us the breath of life. He spoke and everything was created. Everything is made. Everything is there. But for man, he forms us and makes us and breathes into us that life. Wow. He was in the beginning. All things were made through him. There was nothing made without him. Revelation 19 gives to us a powerful sight. In Revelation 19, beginning verse 11, it says, Now I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Wow. Verse 14. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations. He himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. And he has on his robe. Now this, this verse 16 is a very special verse to me because this is a verse that David used when he was just a teenager and he wanted to get a tattoo. And I'm, I'm not saying yay or nay. I'm not, uh, that's between you and the Lord. I just told him as long as he was in my house, no. What When he became a man, what he wanted to do, that's, that's between him and the Lord. But verse 16 says, He has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And David said, well, see there, even Jesus has got a tattoo. He's got King of Kings and Lord of Lords on his thigh. Well, it does say it's on his thigh. And the other says it's on his robe. I understand that. But I'm not Jesus' father, and as long as you're in my house, this is my rules. Now, what you do when you became a man? To my knowledge, uh, he never did. But that I, I'm not saying he's... He's right or wrong, and I'm not saying somebody's wrong for getting one. Uh, I, I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying that Jesus is coming forth, and he's coming forth with a powerful sword that is the word of God, and he, he's going to smite the nations. He's going to rule with a, a rod of iron. And there's a lot of destruction when that word goes out in that valley, and that army is annihilated. And Jesus sets his foot on the Mount of Olives, and there's an earthquake, and the mountain splits, and he comes down the Kidron Valley, and he goes into the eastern gate into Jerusalem, and he establishes his kingdom on the earth for a thousand years of peace. 
I don't know when that's going to happen. I do know this is going to happen. Because the word is true. I've lived too long and been through too much to come to this point in my life and think that it's not going to happen. I believe with everything in me, God is true. His word is true. And it's coming. What we're supposed to do until that happens, until the end comes, I don't know when that is. There's some days it looks like it's closer than others. But what we have to do is get into the Word of God. Allow the Word of God to work in my life. Allow the Word of God to do in me what He's desiring to do in me. To cut apart the junk and the stuff. To, to, to separate what's important and what's not important. I'm, I'm 65 years old. And I can sit here tonight and tell you that there are some things at one point in my life that I thought was, oh, this is important. And I've come to the point and place of realizing, you know what? It's not what it's all about. What it's all about is Jesus. That's what it's about. It's about us being a light in this world. The light didn't come to condemn. The light didn't come to destroy. It came to save. And I believe our mission is to call people to repentance, to show them a better way, to give them hope in a hopeless world until there is no more hope. That's not now. It's not at this moment. We still have time to be what God's wanting us to be and to do what he's calling us to do. To take this message of love, of hope, of peace, of assurance and share it with this world. We live in troubled times. We live in difficult hours. But there's hope because Jesus is alive. And I want to encourage you to take that sword of the Spirit. When you, when you read the the book of Psalms, especially the 119th Psalm. It's the longest Psalm in the whole book. But it's about the Word of God. So why wouldn't it be about the longest book? It's about the Word of God. The 119th Psalm, verse 11 says, Your Word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Lord, you're valuable to me. You've given your all that I might have life. You know, we, we just came through a, a weekend, a Memorial Day weekend of, of remembering those who have gone before us, who've paid the ultimate price for our freedom. And, and this nation is built upon freedom, regardless of what may be going on at this very moment and how we may think our freedoms are under fire, because they are, but... They've always been under fire. Freedom is not free, and it, it, it takes people who are willing to, to, to give the ultimate sacrifice to maintain that freedom. But I think about the freedom that Jesus has given to us, and that it doesn't matter what nation you live in in this world. You can live in communist China. And no freedom with Jesus Christ. Oh, I understand what you may have to go through. And I understand the, the difficulty. There are people that are dying tonight around this world for the cause of Christ. But you know what? He gave his life for me. 
I don't know what may happen in America. I don't know what we may have to face. I'm convinced that the America that I grew up in, which was not that long ago, I don't know if we ever see that America again. I don't know if my grandkids will ever understand the kind of America that I grew up in. I want to be able to pass that to them. I want to be able, to, but more than that, I want to pass to them the hope and love of Jesus, the freedom that he can give, that regardless of what the government's doing, you can know a freedom that's in Jesus. Allow the Holy Spirit to take the word of God cut the junk out of my life. Wow. God, do it in all of us, I pray. Help us to stop trying to be people pleasers. Help us to be God pleasers. That we walk obedient. Because that's that's what he's wanting us to be. If you remember what I read at the very beginning, that that sword cuts, it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. The message puts it that it 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 cuts away everything, whether doubt or defense, laying us open to listen and obey. God, let your word come alive in my life. Let your word come alive in me. Not what somebody said it said or what, but Lord, let your word come. What, what are you wanting in me? What is your desire for me? What is your call upon my life tonight? God, help us to understand that this is about a relationship. It's not just about, oh, I got a sword. I can go out there and I can slice everybody. Because you see, I don't really think it's about slicing everybody else up as much as it is about slicing me up and cutting the junk away and laying bare to the Lord. Here I am, Lord. <coughs> you use me. You be pleased with me, is my prayer. That's, that's what it's all about, folks. We can, we can take all this theological stuff and we can cut it up and we can make it say whatever we want it to say, but what it boils down to is it's about a relationship with Jesus. It's about a personal relationship. Nobody can live mine I can't live yours. That's why I have trouble with people who feel like they, they have all the answers and they know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing all the time. Or they know exactly what you're supposed to be doing all the time. You're supposed to do it their way. I don't find that in Scripture. I'm sorry. What I find in Scripture is we're all seeking His way. We're to take his yoke upon us and learn of him. That's, that's what this is all about. That's what the belt of truth, that's what the shoes of peace, that's what the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. It's about him. It's about us becoming what he's wanting us to be. Because you see the whole key, the whole key goes back to what he said at the very beginning of this. He said, look, I want you to put on this armor so that you will be able to stand in the evil day. And when that evil day is over, you're still standing. Well, people think I'm not victorious. I don't care what people think. I care what he thinks. And as long as he's happy with where I am, as long as he's happy with what's going on in my life, 
as long as I'm I'm open and 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 cultivating this relationship. God help us. God help us to hide this word in our heart. You know what what that truly means and it, it, probably the word hide is the wrong interpretation of it. It's let it fill my life so that even in the darkest moments, the deepest recesses, the darkest valleys, your word is still light. Because it's all in me. <coughs> it's all through me. That's what I live by. I wonder what would happen in this world if we were more concerned about developing our relationship with God than building our name or our kingdom. It's not my kingdom. It's his kingdom. It's not my church. It's his church. Read the book of Acts sometime. Mighty move of God after the day of Pentecost. And the Lord added to the church. Unless the Lord builds a house, we labor in vain. God, help us to be what he's wanting us to be. Help us to be, Lord, vessels that you can use at any moment, at any time. That's our prayer. Father, I thank you for your love and mercy. I thank you for this opportunity to come and share together. I pray, Lord, that you would let your word come alive in us. That sword of the spirit that is alive, that is able to cut away everything. Lay it open to bring healing, to bring restoration. God, I pray that you would speak into our hearts and into our lives. I pray that the condemnation that the enemy would try to heap upon your people, I pray, Lord, that you would rise up and that you would be powerful in our lives. God, your word didn't condemn us. Your word convicts us. Lord, I want to do better. I want to be more obedient to you. I, I, I want to be everything you're wanting me to be. Help us, Lord, I pray. Be with each home and each family, each one of us. Prepare our hearts and minds for what you're wanting to pour into us this weekend. Prepare us, Lord, as we celebrate the coming of the Spirit of the Lord to grow us up, to mature us, to reveal Jesus to us. God, help us to walk in you. Help us to be obedient to you, I pray. Be with each of those that are sick in body, that you would minister healing, that you would touch each and every one. Pray for Scott, that you would touch him and bring healing in his body. Minister to him, to his whole family. God, we're believing you to touch him. We're believing you to minister right now. For Susan Windsor, continue to touch her. Minister healing in her body, Lord. For by your stripes, she is made whole. And we claim that healing tonight. For Augusta, God, that you'd continue to strengthen her, undergird her, hold her up. May she sense your awesome power and presence. Father, have your way in each and every one of us. 
We thank you, Lord, for who you are, for what you're doing. We join together and we celebrate Jesus. Thank you for your word, your word that is sharper than a two-edged sword. Thank you. Thank you for this relationship that you're desiring to build in each and every one of us. And we thank you for your blessings upon all of us. Have your way, Lord, in our service Sunday. I just pray for an outpouring of the Spirit of God. God, have your way. Move and minister. Lord, I pray for Destiny's dad that you'd minister to him, touch him, bring healing in his body. Father, I'm believing you to move upon the scene. Have your way in all of us. And as we join together this coming Sunday, Lord, we give you the service and we ask for your will to be accomplished. Have your way among us. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. Thank you guys for joining with us tonight. Um, remember our service Sunday, 10 o'clock. Come and join with us. We celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Uh, you don't want to miss that. Uh, also, uh, continue to support the church. You can go to infusionchurchnc.com. Go to our giving page. You can give through Easy Tithe. You can text give. Or you can mail it in to Infusion Church, P.O. Box 14281, Archdale, North Carolina, 27263. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining with us. Thank you for sharing this time. And uh, I hope you're staying cool. And uh, I think we've got one more hot day, and then it gets us a break on Friday. So enjoy. Stay cool. We will see you Sunday. More than, may the Lord bless you and keep all of you until we meet again. Lord bless you.